Most nonprofit arts groups have volunteer boards working behind the scenes, raising money and deciding policy. Corporate, civic, and foundation leaders on these boards have an enormous impact on the arts world. For 17 years, the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra had a chairman of its board like none other. Victor, is a, he's an artist at heart. Warm, friendly, he's genuine. You know, they say that someone's a player's coach. He's an artist board chairman. <laughs> he operating somewhere here in New Jersey in the hospital, but in the meantime, when, when he has a free moment, he comes to the rehearsal, and then we look to each other, did you listen how beautiful? And he's staying in a uh, backstage here, uh, and, and uh, listen, rehearsal. This is something very special. It's company, yeah. I do that, nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great surgeon who saves people with his hands, but there's another part of him, there's another part of his heart that sees the, important, this, the importance of spiritual enrichment for the individual and collectively for the community. Work with the orchestra has been a, a great fun. I, I, I didn't expect it, actually. When I went on the board, I uh, replaced my father, who died in 1986. I learned a lot about the making of music and the work with musicians, which was a tremendous fun. Outside of medicine and my family, it's the most important thing I've done. Victor has been incredibly generous with his time. Um, you really wonder how he can be a world-renowned surgeon and, and play tennis like a professional and play the piano extremely well and, and put all this time for the symphony. And, and again, that, that's his passion. He's so passionate about it that he finds the time. I remember the Jersey Symphony uh, very well uh, from the, the early 70s. My father was on the board. So before and after the concerts, they had VIPs of the concert world over. And I remember a number of famous artists coming to the house. Uh, Kenny Skirmerhorn was a conductor. I think his single most important accomplishment was to bring the entire organization together, to bring a sense of collaboration. Well, the New Jersey Symphony has gone from being a really uh, good uh, state symphony orchestra to being one of the top orchestras in the country. Uh, Victor's relationship with the symphony is financial, uh, it's administrative, but most of all, it's with the musicians. He loves the musicians. In the early 90s, when he became very active on the board, became the board chair, um, he took a very special interest in getting to know us musicians. He looks at musicians not just as the workers, but rather as the professionals that we are. And that he looked very much um, at us the way he did at his colleagues at the hospital. As an amateur musician himself, quite a fine one, he does understand what it takes to be a musician. He, he really respects them and admires them. I had piano lessons, obviously. I started when I was six or so. I remember hating to practice, as um, everybody does. Um, but what made it fun was my father and mother. My father used to say uh, at the end of a dinner, uh, I challenge you to a sonata, which meant uh, let's go in the other room and tackle something. Uh, it was a challenge, I tell you that, because neither of us were very good. My mother was a pianist and I use that word properly. Uh, I play the piano, but she was a pianist. And she and Sam Applebaum, who was the premier violin teacher in the area, were a piano-violin duo and gave concerts. My father played the, the violin, but we call that playing the fiddle. He was a terrible violinist, but very enthusiastic. He practiced a lot. He had a string quartet, uh, the, the Hafton Quartet, half done because the four of them together weighed half a ton. Did I, did I ever want to, always want to be a doctor? I think the answer is I never knew anything else. And then, of course, I went to medical school during the Second World War. You had to be in a track. I mean, you couldn't take a year off and think about things in Europe. So. 
He just kept going. It never occurred to me to do anything else. Uh, I had medicine in my background. Both grandfathers were doctors. My father was a doctor. At one time, we had 19 family members on the staff of the Beth Israel in medicine. So I, I didn't know anything else. I was in the right place at the right time. Heart surgery and vascular surgery hadn't begun when I was in my residency. And so when I heard about these things, I began working on them. So I sort of grew up in, in, the, in the heart surgery specialty. If you are one of the prominent people in cardiology, you know Victor Parsonet. Victor has been on the ground floor of uh, pacemaker technology since his very first introduction. And now he's working on a device, because he never stops, that uh, actually can be monitored remotely. If you were to watch Victor in the, in the operating room, it is very much like a musician playing a concerto. And it's very parallel to the technical expertise and professional dedication that a pianist might require. Well, the best thing about you having to step down is that you're still there. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, musicians, uh, many of them become uh, good friends. They understand that I, I love what they do and love them, and I admire it. I'm jealous of what they can do. But also I have the other aspect, is I'm a physician, and they tend to come to me for their problems. Right before a concert, and then I was rushing on stage, and he was, you know, saying, hi, how are your parents? Well, my dad's not so great. Oh, well, why is that? Oh, well, uh, he has something that um, nobody will touch, nobody will uh, is willing to to operate on him it's it's um, too difficult and he said well what's the nature of it I explained and he goes you call me in the morning I called him in the morning and he says you you call this person and sure enough that person was the person that literally saved my dad's life you know he said I think we can work this out and it was because it was one of Victor's colleagues <laughs> I'd cut my finger uh, to my to my right hand, and I was extremely uh, extremely worried about it. I thought I was going to have to you know, quit the violin or something. So I went to the emergency room. Victor came down with some specialists. He brought you know a number of people down. There were four guys around me looking at my little finger cut on my little finger here. And they put a band-aid on and sent me home. But I was very well cared for. <laughs> A couple of years ago, the orchestra gave me a gift that I could play with them sometime, and I flatly refused. It just seemed incongruous that an amateur should play with them. But then when I became emeritus, uh, Larry Goldman in the Performing Arts Center offered me the opportunity to play on the stage as a gift from them. And of course, the greatest thing was that Naomi Yervi uh, conducted. He has a way of moving his hands and his shoulders and his eyes that, that, that really captures you. So I, I was, it was a great thrill. It seemed, you know, it's like you you're, uh, have been all the time playing with him, him music. I don't know very much chairman of the board of directors who playing Mozart concertos our days. It was more reticence on his part. But as soon as he got over, the, over that tentativeness and, and saw how much he was loved by the members of the orchestra and how much it would mean to them to, to uh, be able to collaborate with him. And this is our surgical theater. It was such, such a great way to say thanks, you know, because he's just always been there.